in anatomy class, we have been discussing nutrients and nutrition. And a very quick overview there. Here is our uh, fact versus myth, where we talked about water. Uh, the fact that water is pretty much a, just a, essential to dissolve chemicals and to help chemical reactions happen. Um, we talked about carbohydrates uh, used for energy. 46% uh, of the average American diet should be 58. We talked about protein. Um, about 12% of your diet by the US RDA and where you get it and what it's for. And then we talked about fats. You actually need about 30% of your diet to be a fat and uh, some different types of fats. We talked about calories the other day and we're going to finish that up with your BMR study and everything else. Uh, we didn't really talk about junk food, but <clears throat> junk food is another calorie thing. Okay, people call food junk food that has lots of calories per mouthful or stomachful, essentially. And really, um, junk food is, quote, bad for you if you're overeating calories, you're genetically prone to blood cholesterol problems. We talked about that a little bit with the heart. And uh, one thing that's not really written on here is that junk food is bad for you uh, if that's all you eat. You know, I mean, if you're eating high carb, really, it's high carbohydrate, low protein, high carbohydrate, high fat, low protein diet is what we would consider junk food diet, I would say. And so uh, it's not very often that somebody calls a steak junk food, although I guess in some cases, you know, red meat is bad for certain uh, diseases and things like that. Well, then that's junk food to you. So junk food is kind of one of those things that uh, is... I don't know, not necessarily, it could be different for everybody. Okay, there are two other uh, fact versus myths that I think these are pretty common. Uh, that if you have a cold, you should take extra vitamin C. Um, I know a lot of people that as soon as they get a cold, they grab the vitamin C. And they start taking vitamin C. Um, and vitamin and mineral supplements, vitamin pills, Flintstones, chewables, I had those every day when I was growing up. And other kinds of those things are essential to helping you grow right and work right. You know, there's a, I don't know if you watch, there's many uh, commercials on today. You know, one a day for men and, you know, one a day for women and vitamin pills and uh, companies selling you their vitamin supplements and mineral supplements because you need these, you know, to help you be healthy as a male or healthy as a female. And you, they tell your parents, make sure your kids have vitamins when they're a kid. And uh, in certain cases, that may be necessary. And we'll see that in a second. So let's talk about vitamins. And we'll talk about vitamin C specifically. Uh, what vitamins do in your body is they serve as coenzymes in chemical reactions. Now this... Uh, deserves a little bit of explanation. We talked about enzymes before, and an enzyme is a chemical that makes or breaks something down, either helps build in the body or helps break down in the body. So, for example, enzymes have very specific shapes, and they do very specific things, like this enzyme would break down because it fits, would maybe break this molecule apart by grabbing onto it and breaking it apart. A coenzyme is a chemical that is needed somewhere else. Maybe it sticks onto the enzyme in a different place to give it the right shape to work. I equate this to if a scissors is like an enzyme, the coenzyme would be your fingers. The scissors is not going to work right until you stick your fingers in the holes to make it work. So uh, they serve as what are called coenzymes, and specific chemical reactions in your body. And the only way to get many vitamins, not all, but many of them, is through your diet. And so we've mostly defined vitamins but what happens by what happens if you don't have them. So for example, if you have a lack of vitamin C, you get a disease called scurvy. Um, the story from the uh, British sailors. To this day, people that serve in the British Navy are called limeys. 
And the reason they're called limeys is in the 1800s, one of the huge problems with going to sea, or maybe 1700s, I can't remember the exact date, was that sailors would get scurvy. They'd be away from the land and they would eat certain foods and they could not figure out why these sailors would always develop the same disease. They'd have bleeding gums, bone problems, joint aches. Really, it could kill you. Scurvy, and I'll show you a picture of what gums with scurvy look like in a minute. So, the sail uh, somebody figured out, they brought along a case of uh, citrus fruit one time, and nobody got scurvy. And they didn't really know why. But from then on, every ship in the British Navy has had limes on it in the back in the 17, 1800s. And so now they're still called limeys to this day, even though now every ship would have uh, citrus fruit on it or vitamin C pills or something like that. Um, most foods in small amounts contain uh, vitamins. Okay, now obviously vitamin C is specific pretty much to citrus fruits and other things like that, some green leafy vegetables. Um, many foods have, very, have small amounts of vitamins. You only need a small amount of a vitamin, very small amount. Uh, for example, uh, one thing we've learned is that pregnant females, or actually if you're, we're going to talk about this a little bit later, if you think about getting pregnant, they recommend you start taking folic acid. Folic acid is vitamin B6. And we've realized that females with, that reduces what are called neural tube defects by 50%. A neural tube defect is things like spina bifida. And we'll come back to this idea, but I wanted to show you this now that in some cases taking pills is beneficial. There are two kinds of vitamins. Water-soluble vitamins are ones that dissolve in water. So what that means to you is that that's all the vitamin C and the vitamin Bs. They dissolve in water. So what that means to you is if you're taking extra vitamin C, that um, since it dissolves in water, it will end up in your blood, dissolving into your blood, and then your uh, body will use what it needs, and any extra gets filtered by the kidneys. And as we'll see pretty soon, everything that gets filtered by the kidneys ends up in your urine. So when I talk about vitamin C, people taking vitamin C, extra vitamin C, I always say, yeah, you're kind of wasting your money. You're kind of just, you just pee it down the drain. Because all those extra vitamin C pills, that extra vitamin C, anything you don't use, goes out in your urine. Fat-soluble vitamins... The A, the D, E, and K, vitamin A, vitamin D, vitamin E, and vitamin K are stored in fat. And so extra vitamins you take of those are stored in your body, okay, somewhere, and stashed away for later or sometimes just never used. Now, interestingly about vitamin D is your body will make that when you're in the sun. Um, one of the things that we've done in America is because people were living in the northern climate areas and they were having problems with lack of vitamin D when it was cloudy a lot or they lived in a place like Seattle or Grand Rapids, Michigan where it's cloudy a lot, that they would have issues with vitamin D deficiency that leads to bone problems. So we, in America, we've started adding it to milk. And so when you get vitamin D milk, well, it's just milk with vitamin D added to it. Uh, vitamin K is actually synthesized by bacteria that live in your intestine. So that's another one you don't necessarily have to get in your diet. Here's a picture of gums with scurvy. Okay, you see the bloody gums? Uh, their teeth would fall out. Uh, it's a little bit more common. It, nowadays you see it in young kids, um, poor and poverty areas. Minerals. Minerals are actually metals, okay, and um, we'll take a look at this in class, but you have things like, uh, things that you would find right on the periodic table, iron, calcium, potassium, magnesium, manganese, okay, all these are minerals, and if you, if you do like I do and read the side of your cereal box in the morning, you'll see these minerals listed on there. These are things, they're usually ions, so 
you know, you would get potassium, calcium, ion that are needed for normal metabolism. Now, we've talked about uh, a couple of these. We talked about calcium specifically when we talked about muscle contraction. Calcium ions are needed for muscle contraction. We talked about iron. We talked about hemoglobin in the blood. So, again, you don't need these in very large amounts. Some people have to supplement them if they have issues. Again, minerals are found in most foods, especially green leafy vegetables. Okay? And so these junk food things, granola bars, and I don't know if granola bars is a good example, uh, candy and other things that don't have very many vitamins and minerals. Okay, but if you start with green leafy vegetables like spinaches and lettuces and things like that, you're going to get most of your vitamins and minerals in your diet. And again, uh, minerals are pretty much defined by what happens when you don't have them. Um, there's copper deficiency anemia. We've talked before about iron deficiency anemia where your hemoglobin isn't produced correctly. Okay, there's something called a goiter. I'll show you a picture of this in a minute. When somebody doesn't get enough iodine. And so, uh, minerals, again, what's really not listed here is that they are needed in super small amounts. You don't need, you're, it's micrograms of minerals and vitamins that you need to survive. Now, here's a lady with a goiter. Okay, a goiter is a swelling of the thyroid gland. Thyroid gland is... Uh, right above your, or right down below your Adam's apple, and right above your sternum, or I mean your uh, your uh, clavicle and your neck. And people that don't get enough iodine in their diet, that helps the thyroid work correctly. We're not exactly sure what it does, but then the thyroid will swell up with lack of iodine. Iodine is found mainly in fish. You can get it from a few certain green leafy vegetables. So, uh, in our country, what we've done is uh, the government decided that since iodine deficiency was becoming a problem as people moved inland, as they moved away from the ocean, and fish and things with high iodine became harder to get, they um, decreed that, well, there's one thing everybody uses, and that's salt. Because back in the day, people would preserve things in salt. So... They, uh, now it's a law that a company that makes salt, you can make salt without iodine, but most salt is, says it right on the container, iodized salt. That iodine has been added to it, and that has greatly, that little simple thing, has greatly reduced uh, the amount of thyroid problems in our country. So uh, that finishes up our discussion of nutrients. The six nutrients to review are water, fat, protein, carb, carbohydrate, vitamins, minerals.